Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for joining us today for our OFA 2022 launch here for the 2022 ninth annual Oakville Film Festival. We are so glad that you're here for us today as we get ready to share with you all the details about this special event coming to Oakville and online June 22nd to 28th, 2022. Before we begin today, we'd like to start by saying we acknowledge the land for sustaining us and for providing us with the necessities of life. This territory we're working on is covered by the Dish with One Spoon Treaty and the Two Row Wampum Treaty, which emphasize the importance of joint stewardship, peace, and respectful relationships. OFA recognizes that the land on which we gather has been and still is the traditional territory of several indigenous nations, including the Anishinaabe, the Haudenosaunee Confederacy, the Wendat, the Métis, and the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation. Numerous indigenous nations and indigenous peoples have lived and passed through this territory, and OFA affirms that it is our collective responsibility to honor the land, as we honor and respect those who have gone before us, those who are here, and those who have yet to come. We are grateful for the opportunity to be learning, working, and thriving on this land. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Tyler Collins. I am the one of the festival hosts for OFA 2022, and I am the arts reporter for Oakville News and oakvillenews.org. You can read us online for free every day at oakvillenews.org. Today, I am so pleased to be your host for the launch event as we get to share with you all of the great tangible details about tickets, films, dates, times, and the galas that we're going to be holding for OFA 2022. Not only is this Oakville's ninth annual film festival, this is also the first time we are back with live events in the summer since 2019. For the last two years, we've had a terrific virtual festival offering hundreds of shorts and lots of great feature films. This year, we're going hybrid. That means in addition to the real life in person shows we're holding at film.ca cinemas and the virtual online events that we're hosting, you know, online, we'll also be returning to the Oakville Center for the Performing Arts for three gala events during the festival's run. This year, we continue to set records with the number of movies offered with 21 feature length films and documentaries and an incredible 92 shorts being offered. That totals over a hundred films that you'll have the opportunity to see exclusively at OFA 2022. Before we hear more of myself yammering on, we're gonna have a chance later this afternoon to hear directly from some of the creators, the directors, writers, producers, and talent behind these works. But first, we have a video package prepared to introduce to you some of the highlights of our festival lineup. We hope you'll join us afterwards for a live conversation with more details about the festival. But if you'd like tickets for any of these events, they are going on sale later this afternoon. Festival passes, gala passes, and individual tickets will be available at ofa.ca beginning immediately after this presentation. Now sit back, relax, and let us present to you the offerings of OFA 2022.
What an extraordinary lineup of movies that we have set for this year's festival. Uh, we are so grateful now that we are uh, pleased to introduce a lot of the filmmakers, the writers, directors, actors, producers of some of the featured works we have coming to OFA this year to come and talk about their work. Now, while they're coming in, and we'll introduce them in just a moment, uh, a reminder for all of our attendees here today, if you are excited to see any of the movies that are coming out for OFA this year, tickets go on sale immediately following this presentation in just about 30 minutes. We have feature passes where you can choose three or five movies, a gala pass to attend all three headliner events at the Oakville Center for the Performing Arts, individual tickets to pick and choose individual movies, either virtual or in person, and of course, the best deal at OFA, the All Access Pass, where you will have unlimited access to all the offerings and you can see all 113 features and shorts at the festival this year. Ooh, that's a mouthful. The only thing better than talking about all these great events, of course, is your opportunity to buy your tickets. And if you were one of our pre-sales, thank you so much for already getting your passes and tickets for the festival. You get advanced access to choose your events first. Now, I... Oh, and I'm being corrected. The gala pass is actually just Thursday and Friday. It is not Saturday. That is my mistake. It's still an excellent pass you should buy just for our Thursday event, Phantom of the Open, and Friday night, Toronto. Uh, we now seem to have a lot of our guests in, but I have not been provided with a list of everybody who is here. So what we might do is instead just go across all our panelists, and I will let you introduce yourselves uh, for everyone here. So let's start just going left to right on my screen. First, we have Sean. Oh, hello. Hi. Um... I'm not sure if you can see me, but uh, my name is Sean Cisterna. I directed a movie called The Long Rider. Uh, you saw the trailer of this kid, uh, Felipe Leite, who was um, asked to leave our country of Canada and to get back home to his family in Brazil, rides a pair of horses from Canada to Brazil. So this will be our uh, Oakville debut, and we're super excited to, to bring this story to Oakville. It's lovely to have you for the festival, Sean, here today as well. Uh, Oak Hill fans may remember Sean's work. He had an entry in the seventh uh, OFA, which was From the Vine, which was the comedy drama starring Joe Pantoliano. That's right, yes, thank you. And it's so awesome to see all my friends up on the screen here, Diane and Jonas, it's, um, I'll let them talk about themselves, but. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, let's go to Diane next. Awesome. Oh, Diane, uh, we, you seem to be saying some lovely things about yourself, but you are muted and we cannot hear you. I'm actually saying lovely things about Sean. <laughs> so, oh. And just encouraging everyone to go see The Long Rider. It's fantastic. Um, I'm Diane Ackham. I'm uh, produced and directed. It's just Parkinson's, which is not a Parkinson's boring medical documentary. It's the story of a mindset over adversity and a man discovering um, how to regress his Parkinson's symptoms and uh, and and just get everything out of life that he can and never give up. It's incredibly inspirational. And um, whether you have any kind of medical afflictions or not, it's really for anyone that has any kind of struggle or challenge in their life. And it's amazing and so proud to be here. I am a Sheridan College graduate, so it's really quite special for me to be showing this film here in Oakville. Thank you, Diane. Next is Jonas. Uh, hi, 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 everybody. I'm Jonas Chernick. Uh, I wrote and produced and am one of the lead actors in the movie Ashgrove, which is a closing night movie live in a real theater with actual people, which is uh, very exciting. It'll be our Canadian theatrical premiere. The movie has played other festivals, but uh, not in the theater in Canada. So we're, and we shot it nearby in, in Kitchener, Waterloo. So we're going to have everybody there at the theater, uh, our cast, our crew. Uh, we're very excited to watch it with an audience. Uh, I hope you guys can all come out and see it and meet me, and, and we can tell you how we made it. It's a, kind of a crazy way that we made them. We've never made a movie like this before. It's unlike anything you've ever seen, and uh, it will blow your minds when we tell you how we made it, but that's a surprise that we're going to save. Thank you. We can't wait for uh, we can't wait for the chance to see it and to meet you as well. Awesome. Next, we have Charmaine Hammond, who is the producer of Back Home Again, 
Uh, fans in Oakville, you may have seen our free event that we held at the Oakville Center premiering the short just two weeks ago, and it is coming back to OFA. Hi, Charmaine. Hi, great to see you again. I'm the executive producer of the incredible Back Home Again animation by screenwriter, producer, director, Michael Mankowski. And it's an animated short based on the Fort McMurray wildfires in 2016, as told by the animals who live in the Wood Buffalo Forest. We're absolutely thrilled to be coming back to Oakville. I grew up in Burlington, so Back Home Again is coming back home. We're so excited to see you, Charmaine, and I can't wait for more people to see the short. Uh, next is Farhan. Far sorry, Farhan. My mistake. Hey, it's all good. Common common mistake. Uh, I'm Farhan Moradi. I'm the writer-director of Tehranto. Um, it is a Iranian diasporic romantic comedy set in Toronto uh, about two young students from very different uh, upbringings uh, that... Uh, kind of fall in love, but don't really mean to. Uh, I went to Sheridan College as well, um, where I've lived in Oakville for many years. And I know um, lots of people involved in the festival, lots of filmmakers who have their films playing at the festival. So uh, I'm excited to be in good company. I'm excited for the film to be in great company with other great Canadian films. And uh, and yeah, just uh, just super pumped for next month. And we're super pumped to be featuring Toronto as one of our gala presentations that's going to be on Friday, July 24th at the Oakville Center for the Performing Arts. In addition to the film and a live Q&A, there will also be some special uh, live on stage performances accompanying that feature. That's an event you will not want to miss. Next up is Catherine Parsons. Hi, Catherine. You'll want to unmute yourself first so we can hear you. Got it. Okay, thanks. There we go. I'm Catherine Parsons. Uh, my feature documentary is having its Canadian premiere at Oakville. I'm really excited because I love the venue. Uh, it's about the rescue of uh, fire cats, pet cats, after the devastating wildfires uh, in California 2017, 2018. I got totally hooked on it. I became kind of a part-time long-distance rescuer. I'm a screenwriter, but I sat down at my computer following the stories early on and I just couldn't leave it. And so I put everything aside and decided to make a, a, what I thought at the time was a short documentary. I'm really excited to be paired with Back Home Again because I think we both understand uh, the devastating effect on wildfires and um, on, on animals. And it's it kind of kind of brings a human side to the impact of wildfire. It's just not the loss of property. It's it's a lot more devastating than that. I'll be handing out free posters to any of the audience who have proven to have cat hair on their clothes when they come to watch my film. You heard it here first, folks. Don't do your laundry. Get a free poster. Only at OFA. <laughs> and, and last here. but certainly not least, we have one of the makers of drink water, Mike. Hi, Mike. Are you there? Nice to be here. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Hello. Yes, for some reason, my camera's zooming in really closely on my face. But uh, yeah, so I grew up in Grimsby. We made this film 40 years ago in grade 13, three of us. And we had the opportunity 40 years later to work with some extremely talented people, including Stephen Campanelli and Eric McCormack. And uh, our only mandate was to make a film. Our only mandate was to make a film that made everybody, every character had a positive character. Yeah. So it was a lot of fun, a tremendous amount of fun to make this film. Felt well, very we, we're looking forward to screening Drink Water as our official closing night film for OFA this year. That now, to awesome. any of our attendees, if you, I'm sorry, sorry about that. Uh, we we have many of our panelists that are here with us this afternoon, and if you, any of our attendees, have any questions you would like to ask, please put them into the chat that's currently on the side of your screen. If you put in your questions there, I would love to ask them on your behalf to any of our panelists about the great features that are coming to OFA this year. Now, before we do that, however, there's one more person who's just hopped into the chat. Uh, we'd like to welcome back home again, director Michael Mankowski. Hi, thank you for having me today. I'm honored to be part of your film festival and uh, see you again, Tyler. 
Hi, Michael. Great to have you back. So first, before we get some of the other questions coming in from the attendees, uh, I'm curious to hear from any of you uh, here as part of our panel, what are of some of the other movies that we're going to be showing that you're most excited to see? Any events you're hoping to come when you uh, come in to see OFA later this uh, this summer? Yeah, Jonas? Uh, yes, uh, I'm a big fan of Mr. Sean Cisterna. Uh, I've seen all of his films, and I've acted in I've acted in one of them. Uh, and I haven't seen his latest film. It's the only Sean Cisterna film I've never seen, so I'm very excited to see that movie. We're also getting a hand up. I think we have another one of the filmmakers currently with some technical problems, James Hughes. Hi, James. Can can you speak on audio for us? Hello. Hi, James. Great to have you. Hi. How are you? Hi. Would you like to talk about your offering for the festival this year? <clears throat> um, so it's a short film, When the Rain Sets In. Um, it's a story about Kenzie and Traden who've been swept up in a six-month romance, and they've reached a critical moment in their journey uh, where they discuss has their love story come to an end. Um, and as we um watch them discuss this we see the glimpses of the love story and then have to decide whether they should stay together well that's fantastic we will you be attending the festival in person for your film um i'm looking into it at the moment i'm in london so um uh still looking but um very excited to be part of the festival very honored and we're really grateful you to make some time to be with us this afternoon. Thank you so much for joining us all the way from London today. Now, do we have any of the other filmmakers, some of the other movies uh, you yourselves are excited to see? The one that caught me a lot was, uh, I, 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 I need the, you to tell me the t title again, Tyler. I think it was like Backlash or... Backslash. Uh Backslash. Or slashback, my, my slashback. apologies. Slashback. Yes, I cannot wait to see that. I'm uh, a lover of uh, aliens, and an, I'm from an indigenous community as well. So I, I just feel, uh, yeah, it's everything I love in that film. I'm very excited to see that. I think, true to form, there's been a resurgence of great indigenous stories that we're now seeing come to the forefront uh, in Canadian media. And this year, we have multiple features that are focusing on telling not just the true stories of the indigenous population here in Canada, but the fictitious ones as well. Uh, if anyone got to see OFA screen the fabulous Night Raiders, the directorial debut of Denis Goulet earlier last fall, that also played at TIFF, there's really a great emergence of these fabulous movies finally getting their chance in the spotlight. Uh, Drinkwater, too, I believe, is a, one of those great additions coming to the festival this year. Uh, Charmaine. I'm excited to see all of them, honestly, and really looking forward to Catherine's film, uh, Firecats. I agree with what you said, Catherine. There's some real synergies there. Looking forward to that. And then also looking forward to Peace by Chocolate. I know um, Peace by Chocolate, they have a chocolate bar, Peace of Mind, that actually supports one of the organizations that we've worked very closely with on Back Home Again, which is Canadian Mental Health Association. And so really looking forward uh, to seeing that as well. I think it's going to be a great festival. I also am looking forward to Peace by Chocolate. When I first heard the story, I'm an East Coast boy, I thought this would make a great film. And so the fact, not just that it's been turned into one, but now we get to show it and share it with the Oakville audience, uh, such a wonderful opportunity. Uh, it seems like our questions have not come in. And so if, if that's going to be it for today, the last thing I'd like to do is quickly hear from all of you uh, something about something about the experience of coming back in person. Almost all of your features are gonna be showing on a big screen for a live audience. And we haven't had this at OFA since 2019. So the fact this summer is the chance we finally get to come back to a theater is really special for us. If everyone, again, will go down the line in one or two sentences, tell us what you're most looking forward to sharing this with a live audience again. Uh, we'll start with you, Sean. Um, yeah, I'm looking forward to, um, well, selfishly connecting with old friends again. Um, it's been a while since we've seen each other as well. So to be able to celebrate all our films together in the, in the same space will be uh, 
uh, something that feels monumental <laughs> after two and a half years of uh, of living through this. And um, yeah, uh, that, that's my biggest thing. And just hearing hearing a, a crowd respond to a film. You know, we've made these in a bubble, so to hear uh, an audience either gasp or laugh or or you know quell with drama, like that's that's the one thing I'm really truly looking forward to. Next is Diane. Um, it, it's sort of the same story here. We, you, you produce and, and you, you direct these films in a bubble. And mine was literally a bubble because even when we opened up for travel, mine was shot in the U.S. Um, I had a major problem crossing the border to get into do the shoot. So for me, um, tomorrow morning, I leave for my third film festival. Uh, we're going to be at the Fort Myers Film Festival screening on Thursday night. And so... I've now seen it three times on the big screen and here in Oakville, it's unfortunately it's virtual, but there'll be a whole new experience for me too. Cause I still don't know attend the festival in person. I just live in Milton. So I'm going to come to, to everything that's happening, but that, yeah, that first time it's on the big screen and, and people laugh or gasp or you hear them sniffling or they're crying. It's so unbelievable. Cause you're thinking, okay, I'm not the only person this is touching. Like I was right. This is a story. And, um, it's so gratifying and to meet people afterwards in person and, and people you don't know, it's not family saying, Oh, such a good job. You know, it's, it's people who are really, really touched and, uh, and blown away by your film. So that's, that's just been the, the greatest gift of all. And to be able to even have it virtually is, uh, is amazing. Next James. Yeah. Hello. Um, so I think, um, you know, as, as kids, we were all sort of sitting in the dark and we, we have all of these favorite movies that, um, that we connect with and we um, have an emotion to when we're in the, we're in the live cinema. And um, to be on the other end of that, to share that with an audience and sort of be sitting there with an audience when they experience that and they connect to your film is always very special and uh, it just can't be replicated in, in anything else that we do. We're on. Yeah, I uh, I've been really looking forward to finally showing the film in um, in, in a physical setting. Um, the movies played at a couple festivals digitally, but uh, yeah, you never know um, how people are going to react to it. You never know if the jokes are going to land, if the emotional beats are going to hit. Especially because this is my first feature film, so um, I still haven't had that opportunity to really see how. All Uh, we'll next go to Mike. Mike and then Michael. Yes, Hi. Um, yeah, we made our film in 16 days, and it was insanely busy and stressful and just chaotic, to be totally honest. Um, and first time I watched the film was in Calgary, and I looked over at my film partner, and he was crying, and then he looked at me, and I was crying because the audience reaction was just incredible. And the imagery and how well it was filmed, you don't actually realize that when you're making it and how beautiful it actually, um, Penticton looked BC and how Canadian it was and how strong the Canadian audience reaction was to the Canadian component. So it was actually really overwhelming. It was wonderful. Yeah, I'm not a filmmaker, I'm a physiotherapist, so. Uh, this was totally new to me and it just blew my mind. It was fun. All right. Uh, just uh, next is Michael. Michael, you're on mute. Sorry about that. And uh, yeah, so like a movie theater setting is like church to me. It means more than anything. And recently, uh, you know, I had the opportunity to screen it uh, in Oakville and, uh, it meant the world to me because I've been working on this film for over five years now and uh, mostly alone. So you're hoping, you know, similar to uh, Farnan and some of the other filmmakers who mentioned, you hope your jokes land and you hope that this actually moves someone. And it was a very emotional experience to watch it recently in a crowd and uh, yeah, rocked me to tears. So I'm just so excited to uh, yeah have that opportunity again. Charmaine? 
Oh, I, I'm I'm really looking forward to meeting all the brilliance and the creators behind each of the films. And the the power for me of coming together um, sort of alludes to what Michael said a few minutes ago. But this film, Back Home Again, is really a conversation starter and about connection and community and to have the opportunity to be in Oakville at the film festival in conversation, in connection, in community just means the world to both of us. And before we wrap up, we have one more guest joining us. We have, we have at least on audio, if not also video, we have Patricia Seaton. She is here with When the Rain Sets In. Hi, or sorry, not the When the Rain Sets In, my mistake. We have uh, Patricia Seaton here from When Worlds Collide. Hi, Patricia. Are you here with us? I am here with you still. I don't know Hi, why Patricia. my camera's not on. That doesn't seem fair. Hi. Would you like to tell us about your, off, uh, your movie? Um, yes, my short film is called When Worlds Collide. I'm very excited to also be returning to Oakville, where I graduated Oakville High School. Um, my film follows volunteers who rescue birds of bird collisions, who go out in the morning um, and collect the birds. And then once a year, they have what they call the layout, which is an homage to lives lost. It's a film told through their eyes, through their stories. Um, and I think people will find it quite moving. I'm excited to be sharing it there and meeting everybody else who I just got to see. Well, Patricia, we look forward to seeing you in person as well when we get to see uh, When Worlds Collide premiere at OFA in June. Ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests, that is gonna do it for our event today. I wanna thank all of our guests, uh, Farhan, Charmaine, Mike, Patricia, Michael, Sean, Diane, uh, as well, we have our fabulous technical crew running in the background. We have Judah Hernandez, who's on tech today, our executive director, Wendy Donnan, with us, and Tori Nixon, our all-around fabulous uh, helping hand making today's event possible. Do not forget that the Oakville Film Festival and OFA 2022 will be taking place Wednesday, June 22nd to Tuesday, June 28th, 2022, both virtually at the Oakville Center for the Performing Arts in person and live in person at film.ca cinemas with all 21 features, documentaries, and 92 shorts taking place this year at the ninth annual Oakville Film Festival. Tickets are going on sale in just a couple of minutes. If you would like individual tickets, pick your own passes, gala passes, or the amazing all access pass. In addition to all this, I'd like to give a shout out to my friend Lingta Lee, who says, I'm your favorite host. Lingta, you are my favorite audience member. My name is Tyler Collins. You're going to be bored to death of me as I get to introduce all 100 plus of these movies later in June, and I can't wait to see all of our fabulous guests, both again on Zoom and in person, for the lineup of terrific events that we are offering this year. Thank you everyone for joining us, and we look forward to seeing you at OFA 2022. Recording.